And we are live. It's good shots. Your man, Dale Sane. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I really want to know podcast. How y'all feeling out there? How are y'all feeling, man? Mm-hmm. Happy uh, Wednesday, hump day. Um, hey, you guys know I'm in Central Florida. Y'all know a lot of storms come through Florida. It's a storm right now. So if something happens, if the stream gets cut off, it's because it's probably a lightning strike or something like that. So just keep that in mind. And if that's the case, we'll get on this back on as soon as we can, if that happens. How y'all doing out there, man? How y'all doing? I uh, hope y'all are well. Um, Like, all is well on my end. I was hoping to do this stream yesterday um, after I did the comedy show, which was our last show at Status for Now. We're, we were moving locations. So um, the comedy arc is going to be moving to a new location. I can't wait to make that announcement, hopefully, uh, by next week, this time we'll make that official announcement. Um, we're just behind the scenes trying to, you know, what I mean, uh, dot the I's and cross the T's, just working out the details, and um, we'll get that going. But we will be doing something monthly at status. Uh, by we, I mean the comedy arc starting in May. So we're not completely done. We're just growing. We're trying to trying to make it happen. Tampa's not a huge market, but. Um, you know, we're trying to do what we do to get that, you know what I mean, to get it going. Brother Pitney's in the building. What's good, fam? Yeah, man. We're going to have to talk about what's going on with uh, with Sean Diddy Combs, man. It is crazy what's going on, man. It is crazy. I just wanted to give it a little time to breathe so we can get some details and see what's really going on. A lot of speculation out there, a lot of rumors out there. There's a lot going on. So um, whenever something like this hits, I like to give it a day or two, <laughs> sit back and wait. And then just kind of get, you know, try to get the information that's out there. So, um, yeah, man. John Combs, bro. Will Diddy survive? Let's get into it. And we are live. What's good, y'all? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Did I really want to know podcast, y'all? Man, oh, man. I tell you what, man. Um, You don't want to be in a position. We talk about this a lot over here, man. You do not want the feds looking into your situation, whatever your situation is. The feds come to see you and you are the target of the investigation. Whatever deal they put on the table is the deal you should take because it's not going to get any better. <laughs> right. Whatever they put on the table is what you should take. But, um, you know, and Sean Combs knows this. It is what it is. Brother Jack Black in the building was good night. <laughs> Say bros out of the country is going to make it stays that way. It's going to make it stay that way. I think that's a rumor. I don't believe he's out of the country. I believe he's still in America. There's some articles out there um, stating that fact. I think he's still in America. Um, but he hasn't gone before a judge. He hasn't been arraigned or anything like that. So normally when uh, when they come to you and they make the arrest and you go, you know, you get arraigned. Um, and if they believe you're a flight risk, the judge will have you surrender your passport. Uh, someone like Sean Combs, I would imagine, has multiple passports. But it is what it is. We're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, but that, that was like the first rumor. People were saying that he is out of the country, like something to do with his jet. He was flying around, this and that. Um, but there is video and photos of Sean Combs at an American airport on a tarmac talking to federal law enforcement officials. Um, there's a story out there. I don't know if it's true. I haven't confirmed it, that they actually brought his airplane back. Like he was out taxiing, right, trying to go take off. And then they, they brought him back. And here in America, you know, air traffic controllers, that's part of, that's what they do. So a pilot is not just going to take off um, if air traffic control gives them instructions to go back. I've personally done that with, with uh, people flying around. And when you land somewhere, the feds will be waiting on you. I can remember a case where law enforcement wanted to raid a particular airplane, uh, a private jet. And they got their intel late. So they called us. They knew the airplane was within, you know, 10 minutes of landing at our airport. They called us and they asked us to delay the airplane. So we we did everything we could to delay it in the, in the air. And then when it landed, they still weren't completely set up. They had to do what they were doing, you know, law enforcement, you know, setting up or whatever. And it was a task force involved. So they had us 
further delay the airplane without making it stop and without, you know, making it seem obvious that we're delaying them. But I just, you know, I was working that day. I was, I was a guy controlling the uh, airplanes on the ground and I just taxied this airplane all over the airport. I turned a five minute taxi into a 35 minute taxi. I just taxied them all over the airport. The pilots were just kind of whatever. It's just, you know, whatever you come in, stuff happens. Yeah, we got to do this. We have some, we got some construction issues or something happened. We got to taxi around. It's going to be fine. And uh, we finally got them to the parking area, to the um, to the hangar. Um, and of course, law enforcement was all set up. And once the airplane pulled into the hangar, you know, cops did what they do. So it is what it is. Um, you know, looking at uh, Sean Combs' situation, bro. Like I said, man, when the feds come for you, bro, it's not good. <laughs> not good. Um, and Brother Pitton, you're right, man. Once the feds come knocking, you're going to prison, bro. You know what I mean? They have that extremely high conviction rate for a reason. Uh, Brother Jack Black, like, I'd be in Vietnam right now if I was him. Well, he ain't going nowhere. The feds, done, if if it's true that, 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 that they did talk to him, like agents did talk to him, I'm pretty sure they told him, like, if we were you, we wouldn't leave the country. And they, I mean, and they're watching him. They know about his aircraft. They're watching him. They know his movements. It's going to be hard for him to get to an airplane and, and, and leave American airspace. It's just going to be hard. You have to file flight plans. It's not like I'm just going to get my plane and go fly to Vietnam. You know, you have to file that. You need there's, you know, paperwork you need between government and all that. So I don't know if if if, if Sean Combs is trying to get out of the country and if he's in Miami, the best way to do it be, will be to get on a boat at this point. But I'm pretty sure they're watching that, too. So <laughs> it's one of those things, man. Brother Dino Dinosaurs in the building was good, fam. <laughs> Like Diddy will be producing move, uh, music for Kim Jong Un <laughs> or Putin right now. You might be right about that, bro. But here's the thing: they're watching him. You know what I'm saying? Big Brother is watching. You can't just get up and leave. Not even Sean Combs. You know what I mean? He can't just get up and leave. So, um, yeah, bro, <laughs> he got problems, man. He got big boy problems, man. So there's definitely some um some information we can go over, man. Um. NPR, National Public Radio, put out a timeline of uh, of Sean Combs, man. So let's let's check this out. Um, so this is again, this is from NPR. I think this came out yesterday, February 29th. So a couple of days ago, I guess the day that all this happened is when this came out. 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, a timeline of allegations against Sean Combs, a rap mogul recent lawsuit, alleged misconduct dating back to the start of his three decade career. So, again, this is NPR. Uh, in recent months, Sean Diddy Combs, the hip hop billionaire who played a major role in commercializing rap, has become the subject of several civil suits accusing him of sexual misconduct, including rape and assault. Uh, for, many, for many years, Combs uh, represented affluence as he turned his stake in Bad Boys Entertainment record label. He found it into an empire that extended to fashion, media, liquor and beyond. Whatever I want, I have to get, he yelled in a clip from his 2017 documentary, Can't Stop, Won't Stop, after smashing things on his desk. What was initially seen as fodder for the grind set for the ultimate hustler mogul now feels more like evidence of an aggressive, domineering disposition, one in line with vicious um, person depicted in the filing. So, you know, when stuff like this happens, y'all, <laughs> they, they look at everything. So they kind of going back and they were like, oh, now they're looking at a documentary that he did in 2017 with him acting up at a desk. I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all seen he's smashing stuff. He's saying things. He's like having a tantrum, whatever I want, whatever I want, I get. You know, people kind of took it light back then. Um, probably most people, some people who knew like mm -mm, that's dude. <laughs> like He ain't playing. Damon Dash, same type of dude. It's just Damon Dash isn't a billionaire. Um, you know, what I mean, imagine what Damon Dash would be getting into if he had that kind of power, that kind of that kind of money. Um, same type person. Uh, you know, so now they're looking at that stuff and like, oh, no, they're kind of showing us who he really is. You no, know, look at this documentary. And it's bro, anything and everything will be used against you in the court of law, in the court of public opinion. So just keep that in mind. A timeline of these events dating back 30 years, juxtaposed with milestones from um, Combs' career displays not only a chilling history of alleged violent behavior, but the way power and celebrity have shielded him. Allegations from the civil suits appear italicized in the timeline. 
So we're going to get into it. This is the timeline. Um, going all the way back to 1990. 1990 is the year I joined the United States Army. So it's like a lot of this stuff I didn't even know what was going on because I was busy doing Army stuff. I wasn't really keeping up with what was going on in America. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, let's see. Combs started his music career as an intern at Uptown Records working under executive Andre Harrell, who is no longer with us. I believe Andre Harrell died some years back. But yeah, he was... Um, uh, Sean Combs talks about Andre Harrell all the time. Andre, Andre Harrell said, yeah, he was an intern, took him under my wing, showed him the ropes, whatever, whatever. 90 to 91. According to a November 2023 lawsuit, Combs and R&B singer Aaron Hall allegedly essayed an unnamed victim, unnamed victim and a friend after a music industry event, then beat her several days later when confronted. Aaron Hall talks about this. Um, you can find video out there. Um, <clears throat> again, most of the stuff we're going to read in this timeline is out there. Like these allegations are not like hush hush. This, this, maybe this is like new to the vast majority of folks who really don't follow that world closely. But for those in the know, they know. Like the rap business, the R and B business. That's a rough game. It, it's always it's always been a rough game. You know, it's it's. You know, people think like, oh, because it's R&B and they're wearing flashy clothes and they're dancing and doing all this, that those guys are whatever. They're pushovers. Nah, bro, they're sharks, man. Sharks, piranhas. They're out there, bro. They're raptors, man. <laughs> raptors. You know what I mean? They're going around like a T-Rex. And it's it's like that in the music business as well. You know, you hear about, you know, um, um, What's the name of the old boy that was doing, doing the casting catch out there? Uh, Harvey Weinstein. It's like you hear about dudes like Weinstein and all that. The record industry, you know, hip hop, R&B, rock and roll, all that, heavy metal, all that. Way worse than what was going on in the movie industry. Way worse. Way worse. I, I did street promotion and I was, you know, working, you know, floating around in those circles for a while when I got out of the military. And I'm here to tell you, there were times when it was safer on the streets. Than it was going to some of these events. And that was before, you know what I mean? The whole East Coast, West Coast and gangster rap and all that. Before all that, bro, it was just always been rough. You just out there, man. So um, that was 1991, the Aaron Hall thing. Um, 1991, according to November 23, lawsuit Combs alleged, allegedly drugs, essayed and videotaped a 19 year old after going on a date with him. Again, we've been hearing about this stuff, right? And then the whole thing with Cassie seems like he was doing that with, you know, that's that's what he wound up paying for later. We're going to read that later in the timeline. Uh, but this was back in 1991 when the first allegations, which this would be the second because it was one back in 1991 with Aaron Hill or Aaron Hall. But, you know, taking a girl out, you're going to drug her, essay her, and videotape the whole thing. And again, we don't, you know, no one was there. No criminal charges were were filed. So it is what it is. It sounds horrible. And if it's true, it is horrible. Um, and, you know, these are the people who are coming forward to get paid out. You know, like, you know, give they wanted to get something for it. Um, yeah, it's like bad. <laughs> this is like bad, 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 bad for Diddy. Um, so, yeah, that was going back to 1990, 1991. Uh, see, Brother Dino is saying, um, I read one of his associates gave him a heads up before the feds raided. Um, I saw that. I don't know how true that was. And. I mean, if that were the case, if someone if I'm him, if I'm Diddy and someone calls me and say, hey, man, the feds are moving on you as we speak, they're raiding your house. Both your houses in New York, I mean, not in New York, in Miami and in L.A. And I know I'm guilty and I'm at the airport. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm getting on the bird. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take me somewhere and I'm trying to I'm going to try to make a move. But I did hear that. I don't know how true that is. You know what I mean? Um, Brother Knight is in the building. What's good, fam? Appreciate you, bro. He was like, Aaron said it on Vlad. And, and Gloria Velez says some wild stuff about Aaron. Yeah, yeah, Aaron Hall's been out there. It's been a lot of wild talk. Man, I'm here to tell you, bro, when Me Too hit, I was shocked that it didn't include the record business, right? They hit Hollywood with Me Too. They hit the corporate world with Me Too. Every, everywhere else got hit, but the record business never never got hit, right? And you notice that's when um 
Russell Simmons left because he was thinking the same thing. He was like, oh, man, me too is about to hit the record business. Man, I better get out of Dodge because he knew what he was doing and who he was doing it with and the ages of those people. So it never really hit. So this might be the last big fight of me too. This might be me too hitting the record, Rick hitting the record business. Um, you know, Aaron Hall, Puffy is going to be a bro. Trust me. Puffy might be the first, but he certainly ain't going to be the last. You know what I mean? And and that's, that's where we are with it, man. Um, see 1993 after being fired from his duties at Uptown Records, Combs started his own label, Bad Boy Records. The label grows in popularity and notoriety over the course of the decade, breaking the careers of Craig Mack, the Notorious B.I.G., Mace, Locks, Faith Evans, and more. So, you know, Sean Combs was out there, bro. And that one, we were talking about the 2023 lawsuit. This is one of the, this is one of the women who was getting a retroactive lawsuit in there, uh, making these claims uh, because of the New York law that, that allowed that. They gave like a, you know, uh, some sort of grace period that allowed people to step forward. And this is one of the, the people who um, who took advantage of that uh, that law in New York. See, 1996, Combs found guilty of criminal mischief for threatening a photographer from the New York Post with a gun. Criminal mischief. You threatening someone with a gun um, in New York? Like, bro, you, normally you get time for that. If they can prove that you had a weapon, that you brandished that weapon, you threaten somebody with the weapon, man, that's... Bro, they can they can hit you with all kind of stuff. And the fact that he got off with criminal mischief, I mean, it just kind of shows the kind of money he has and the type of lawyers he can get to help him out there. So that was 1996. Damn, damn Puffy's out there doing his thing. 1998, Combs started throwing his annual Hamptons all-white parties that come to be known as so lavish and it's and uh, exclusive. He earns the rep of being a modern-day Gatsby. Um, guests range from music industry execs to artists, to actors, real estate moguls and sports team owners. All right. So in 98, that's when, that's when Puffy was really stepping up. He's stepping up his social status game, doing the all white parties. I've heard of them. No, I've never been invited. No, I've never been to the Hamptons for anybody. Um, Sean Combs parties, like his white parties got so massive in the Hamptons that people who lived in the Hamptons complained. You know what I'm saying? You got really, really wealthy people complaining. It, and Sean Combs is like, man, I don't care about y'all complaints. I got I'm, I got bigger money than y'all got. Shut up kind of thing. So now you out there starting to get a feel for the type of person that you're dealing with. You know what I mean? So um, appreciate y'all checking us out, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Go ahead, hit that like and share and all that good stuff. Um, but 1998 is when he started throwing his all white parties in the Hamptons. And that was like, bro, that was like one of the biggest events. You know what I mean? In New York, especially, especially in the entertainment business. They, oh, man, people were trying to get invited to the all-white parties. And it just makes you wonder, what was going on at the all-white parties? Well, if it was anything like the parties in Hollywood, I could tell you what was going on. Uh, April 16th, 1999, Combs is arrested and charged with two felonies, second-degree assault and criminal mischief in the beating of, re of record executive Steve Stout, who says Combs and two bodyguards beat him with their fists, a telephone, a champagne bottle, and a chair. Like, boy, that's a good old-fashioned ass kicking right there, bro. When Combs published, publicly apologized, Stout asked for the charges to be dismissed. Combs reportedly placed out $500,000, half a million dollars for that ass whooping. I'd ask for a million. I don't know if you've ever been hit with a bottle, man. You get hit with a champagne bottle, man. I'm talking about the right angle. You, you Boy, that hurts. And a chair and being punched. The assault, the assault charge was dropped. Combs pled guilty to the lesser charge of harassment, and he is sentenced to one day of anger management classes. Look at what he's getting away with, y'all. Look at what he's getting away with. Right? So 1990 up to 1999, like he's out there doing, you know what I'm saying, real gangster stuff. Right? Putting his hands on people. Now, he ain't the only one as other people. Like I said, the, the record business Man, it's it's violent. Like it's violent. You know what I mean? Going to like impact, going to any of these um um conferences, you know, be it R and B, be it hip hop, whatever it is, bro. When you down there, man, you you sometimes you gotta stand there with your back against the wall and, and see and people in the room. You gotta be in there ready for whatever. You know what I mean? Like Sean and two of his bodyguards beating up on a record label executive for God knows what. 
using bottles, beating him with his fists, hitting him with chairs, and thinking like, what, what you going to do to me? You can't do none to us. I mean, and then it cost, you know, Diddy had to cut a check for half a million dollars. I said, if I was dude, I'm like, I'm going to need a million, bro. Or really, actually, actually, I ain't going to lie to you, man. I don't know if I would have taken the money. I'm like, nah, bro, you're going to have to sit down. <laughs> you're going to have to sit down. You're going to go to, because go to, he could have gotten the 500000 from the judge. Dude, the judge could have found him guilty, sent him to Rikers Island or whatever, or, you know, sentenced him. And then the judge could have uh, ordered Deshaun Combs pay the same money. Pay half a million dollars. Pay a million dollars in restitution to the guy for what you did. He still could have got the bread. I, I mean, there's definitely some more behind that story. I wonder what it is. Um, December 27th, 1999. Combs, along with then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and Riker Shine, are arrested in um, relation to a shooting at a club New York. So at Club New York, it's probably one of the hottest clubs in New York. This I've heard about. Combs is charged for weapons violations, but is ultimately acquitted. Boomer has it that Puffy talked Shine into taking the case. Shine had just got out, too. You know what I mean? He had a he had a hit record out there with, with Barrington Levy and everything. And uh, Shine, they say that uh, Puffy paid him. Like, uh, more than 500000 The rumor goes, like, man, take the case. Jennifer Lopez was in the car. There was a shooting inside the nightclub. People were talking crazy. There's all sorts of stuff out there. You can hear all the rumors and all that. Talk to the people who said they were there. But uh, yeah, everyone who said everyone who said they was there that night, who you know allegedly witnessed it, they say that it was uh, they say it was Puffy who pulled that thing out and let it go. And let it go means pull the trigger, you know, shot people, shot, fired the weapon. So um, and Shine took the case. And back then, you know, Jennifer Lopez was rocking out with Sean Combs. It was a good move for her. It helped her get to a list status and become a big time movie star and all that, like keep her status up or whatever. But she she got <laughs> she stepped away from dude after that. Cause she was there too. She saw it. She was like facing charges. Like you roll with the wrong people. I'm telling you, you find yourself in these situations. Um, so yeah, he got acquitted. But again, the rumor is that Sean Combs paid Shine to take that case. So March of 2000, the first season of Making the Band airs on ABC. Uh, then later MTV, the reality TV competition uh, centers Combs as he searches for new talent to put together in a band running for 12 seasons total. The show later became a uh, cultural staple for MTV and uh, through it Combs created bands like day 26. I don't even remember that band. Uh, Destiny Kane, all signed to bad boys records. I remember the show. I never watched the show again. This was the two thousands. That's when I was, um, I was in air traffic controller doing my thing, but I just remember baseball suits and bats and, you know, I, I remember seeing albums that I never, and songs I never heard. I, I didn't really pay much attention to it, but the show was a success. 12 seasons on MTV when it started out on ABC. And back then, I mean, getting on the network was major. That that money he made for that first season alone would have been a, a pretty, pretty check, bro. And tend to get it on MTV, not as much money, but still good. They ran 12 seasons. Shout out to dude. All right. So, um, you know, you can see that Sean Combs was doing his thing, man. He was, he was making ways. He was doing stuff in, in an entertainment world. <clears throat> but he was moving like a gangster, too, in certain situations. And he's doing things that would have gotten the regular folks, you know, locked up. The gun, two gun charges in New York. And, you you know, what I mean, you walking away from those with lesser charges, if, if anything at all. I don't know y'all if y'all realize how difficult that is, man. New York and California, some of the strictest gun laws in the country, especially New York. You know, I remember Plexico Burris, football player, shot himself in the leg in New York and caught a cake and had to go sit down, had to do some time. He shot himself in the leg with his own pistol and had to go do some time. So I believe that was Plexico Burris. Just to give you an idea, like how is it that Sean Combs is getting tied up into these things involving guns in New York and nightclubs and shootings and whatever and pretty much just walking away? You know what I mean? That takes some doing. And if you got that kind of attitude where you believe you Teflon, you can't be touched, you're going you gonna to get worse. <laughs> you're going to get worse. Beat a man. You and your bodyguards, y'all beat a record exec, a, a square. <laughs> y'all beat the dude, and you pay him half a million dollars, and the, and the charges go away. 
Come on now. That's going to that's gonna get into your head. You're going to start, you know, drinking your own Kool-Aid and believing your own lies. So that's crazy. March 26, 2001, in a lawsuit, local TV host Roger Mills sues Combs, sued him, um, accusing him of assault, false imprisonment, destruction of property, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and a civil conspiracy in exchange um, where Combs and, 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 and I don't even know his word. It's not encouraged, but encouraged, roughed him up and destroyed his camera. So, all right, so Puffy beats up another dude. His entourage. I, I, my bad, y'all. For whatever reason, I just couldn't put that word together. So Puffy's entourage roughed up this guy, destroyed his camera, right? And this guy's like, he's a TV host. So I don't know, maybe it was uh, maybe a podcast type situation or one of those privately owned independent kind of things. Um. You know, maybe it was that. I don't know. I don't think the dude's working for the networks. But this guy, Roger Mills, accused Puffy of assault, false imprisonment. So what they they, they just made, they told the dude he couldn't leave, <laughs> like false imprisonment, they destruction of property, what they they broke his camera, broke his phone or whatever, intentional infliction of emotional distress. I don't even know what that is. Um, and a civil civil conspiracy, right? So, and this is in an exchange where Combs' entourage roughed him up and destroyed his camera. I mean, hey, man. <laughs> like, it's, you know, a, a lot of times these people with cameras doing what they do, trying to get footage, sometimes they cross the lines. Like, I don't know what dude did, but sometimes they cross lines. And, you know, you got somebody who don't mind putting their hands on you. They're going to they gonna show you what time it is. Like, oh, you, th you think we playing? Throw you in the car, take your camera, take you somewhere, make you sit. Like, don't move. You ain't going nowhere. Break your camera, beat you up. I mean, if you tell them to go, you know what I mean? If you got guys around you that's like ready, man, get him, bro. Snatch him up, put him in the car. I can see that. I can see that. And old boy, you know, file charges. Right? And I think that this is under, I think this charge is active too. Like, this civil thing is active. And it's like, as we have yet to be served with the complaint, we are unable to commit to comment on specific allegations. And that was a Cone spokesperson said in a statement. However, any claim that Mr. Cones participated in any wrongdoing is totally false. Furthermore, facilitating the press uh, with this baseless complaint is blatant attempt to exploit Mr. Combs' celebrity for media attention. Uh, a jury finds in favor of Combs in 2004. So, Dude lost the case, but this guy back in 2001, March 26, 2001, tried to, you know, tried to use the court system to get at Puffy. You know what I mean? Saying that his entourage beat him up and kidnapped him and all this other kind of stuff. And it looks like that, you know, Sean Combs' legal team was able to, to get past that case. But damn, that was 2001. 2003, according to a December 2023 lawsuit, Combs with his former bad boy record president, uh, Harvey Pierre, had a third unidentified man allegedly um, gang raped an unnamed 17 year old victim at a Manhattan studio. So you hear about a lot of stories like this. So there's a lawsuit that says that the bad boy former president and Sean Combs and a third man ran a train on a 17 year old at a Manhattan recording studio. Now, I don't know what the age of Cassini is in New York, but I'm pretty sure it's it's close. It's probably 18, but I don't know. You have to look that up. This would this is horrible, but it's a lawsuit and not a criminal suit. But um, damn, it doesn't look good, man. That's like 2003. I've been in a lot of studios and. People working on albums, working on projects, man. They're there around the clock. Um, I've been to the Hit Factory in New York. Um, it was another um, studio in New York. I can't remember the name of it. And when you go into these studios, I mean, anything and everything you could possibly want, they'll get for you. You don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to do anything. Just say, hey, I'm hungry. They bring you a bunch of restaurant menus. 
and you can order whatever you want. Like, hey, you know, I want some alcohol. They'll send somebody out. What, what are you What are you drinking? If you want Hennessy, you want Don Julio, you want whatever, they'll go get it, bring it back. What mixtures do you want? There's, there's people there that just run all day long. It's like, yeah, man, I want Subway. I want pizza. I want this. I want that. Um, I'm pretty sure if you got people in there like, you know, people like, you know, Puffy and them types, if they want women, like we want some girls in here, we want some, you know, we want some green in here, we want to smoke, they'll go get whatever you want. I mean, these studios charge so much money an hour just to be in the studio and then you got to pay the producers and you got to pay all the other people. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's one of those. Oof. Ooh, so I, I've been there. So, and I've, you know, normally you go into a studio, especially with some hip hop stuff or R&B, it's a lot of women hanging around. Like it, it is what it is. Um, you know, it's easy to get yourself in a situation like this where, you know, you got somebody like, hey man, she down, come on in here. Uh-uh, don't do that. Don't do that. And then you never know what people ages are. When you are in and around these in this environment, this type of environment, you never know. Like, how does that person? Who is this? You don't know. You gotta ask them. Like, who who, who are you? You might want to check some ID. I don't have no ID. Well, well, who are you? Why are you in here? But a lot of dudes ain't gonna do that. They might be high. They might be drunk. You know what I mean? Whatever. They see this 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 beautiful young person there, and they want to do something. And um, like I said, a lot of times a person would be okay with being physical with that individual right there or that individual. But then other people were like, yeah, they're in the back, bro. And you know what I mean? She, she doing this or doing that. The other dudes are just going to room. And now you got a problem. Now you got a problem. Cause unless the person is like, yeah, I'm cool with this. If they, they got to consent to this, all these people popping up. If they don't, you got a real problem. The, the thing is trying to prove this stuff in criminal court, like go to police or whatever, and it gets really convoluted. So these things wind up being civil lawsuits. So, and that's what we're looking at here. But that was back in 2003. It's like, you know, Sean, and, Sean Combs and two other dudes, you know, run a train on some unnamed 17-year-old victim. That's not a good look, y'all. That's not a good look at all. And this is this is the kind of stuff that's, Again, this is from NPR. We're reading this timeline from NPR. We're up to 2004. July 6, 2004, Combs arrives at his annual Hamptons All-White Party in possession of uh, the Declaration of Independence, uh, making a new level of fortune and braggadocious for the mogul. Like They actually let him borrow the Declaration of Independence. Man, I find that hard to believe. They actually let him... <laughs> wow. Like, dude said, come to my white party and I got the Declaration of Independence right over here. That's crazy. I never heard of that. <laughs> That's a, I never heard of that. They let him take the Declaration of Independence to his party? I mean, I'm sure if that's true, there's a lot behind that. I mean, there's a lot behind. I'm pretty sure there was a team that handled the Declaration and it comes in a big case, you know, that's sealed so you can't really get to it. You can't open the case up. You can't touch it with your hands. I'm pretty sure that all that was in play, if it's true. This is NPR. I don't see them, you know, not doing their research. Wow. 2006. He had the Declaration of Independence at his white party. Wow. 2005, Comb and singer Cassie Ventura, this is Cassie we was talking about her earlier, meet for the first time, and Combs um, expresses interest in wanting to sign her to his label. Ventura is 19 years old, and Combs is 37. Now, a lot of people know about this story. Um, Cassie winds up getting, a, I think it was a a multi-year contract, you know, for multi-album contract. And she signed it or whatever, but she didn't realize what it came with. And, you know, those stories are out there. I'm not even going to, you know, embellish in them. It is what it is. Um, oh, here it is right here. Ventura signed a 10-year album deal. 10-year deal. Wow. With Bad Boy Entertainment. Her debut single, Me and You, is released, and her self-titled album drops the same year. According to a November 2023 lawsuit, Combs' uh, vicious cycle of, ab of abuse begins here. So, and, you know, she winds up getting a third, well, people assume it was a $30 million settlement. Um, I think it hasn't been confirmed. I don't know. 
Ventura alleges years of physical and psychological and emotional abuse. She claims Combs forced her to purchase and take illegal drugs like cocaine, ketamine, ecstasy, um, that he filmed her as she was forced to participate in sex with male sex workers in multiple cities of his own voyeuristic pleasure in a practice he called freak offs and that he beat her on many occasions in retaliation for talking to other men, often with witnesses present and all that's out there. There's plenty of people out there who said they saw all these things and all that stuff is out there. Scam likely in the bin, in the building was good. That's dope. It was like me and you was my favorite song in 2005, bro. I probably got to hear it to even recognize it, but that's crazy, man. Freak offs came a whole thing. Like, just think about that, man. Like this new term <laughs> going by this whole investigation, but yeah, apparently there are lots of people out there who can confirm what she was saying and what was going on. Um, it just, you know, just crazy. Now, here's the person, like, she's got this 10 album deal. She's got this money, but she's, you know, she has to deal with this guy. And she doesn't know how to break away or whatever. Um, getting beaten and whatnot. All kind of crazy stories. All kind of crazy stories, right? So October 24th, 2007, Combs becomes a marketing ambassador and stockholder in Ciroc Vodka um, by beverage maker Diego. Sales of the vodka skyrocket and Combs becomes synonymous with that brand. So yeah, people talk about Ciroc. He made a good move. So he's doing all this crazy stuff, but he's also making good moves, right? And it, it just is probably feeding that ego, man, that ego, bro. And that's where, you know, that's where it is right now. Uh, March 6, 2007, in a lawsuit with uh, Jill Richenser alleged that Combs punched him, pushed his girlfriend and tried to spit on another woman outside Teddy's nightclub um, at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. In a statement, Combs attorney Benjamin Brofman says, it's just another example of an opportunist sinking to fabricate a lawsuit based on a flat out lie to try to take advantage of Mr. Combs' celebrity status. The case settled out of court in March 2008 and the terms were undisclosed. So, yeah, in, in Hollywood, man, the Roosevelt Hotel, if I'm not mistaken, that is on Hollywood Boulevard in West Hollywood. And um, I've been to the Roosevelt. I've stayed at a couple suites. It's like an older, rustic kind of vibe to it. Um, but a lot of celebrities would like to stay there. My favorite hotel, as you guys know, is the W, and the W is like on the other side of Hollywood Boulevard. Um, yeah, the Roosevelt's, the Roosevelt's on Hollywood, uh, you know, uh, yeah, anyway, like it's just I'm just I was just kind of thinking to myself, I've, I've been to some events there and stuff like that. You when, when people come to town, you, you never know who might be in there. Um, so some guy was saying like, yeah, dude, you know, Sean Combs punched him, pushed his girlfriend, tried to spit on another woman. That's a lot for for Puffy to be doing because, you know, he's going to have bodyguards on with him. So why was why would Puffy even have to do all that when you got bodyguards that just go out there and rush you? So and it's easy. I mean. Probably another example of a guy maybe talking crazy or whatever. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to justify Sean Combs' acts. I'm not trying to, you know what I mean, defend him, but I just wanted to paint a scenario. Like you're in Hollywood and celebrities everywhere. To see someone like Sean Combs, you know what I mean? You you would actually have to say something. Like maybe dude got out of pocket. Who knows? But apparently Sean Combs did something because you wouldn't pay out if you didn't do anything wrong. And I'm, you know, it's, you know, it's this was 2007, pretty sure his video floating around. He had to, he had to go get all this video and all that. So I don't know. I don't know. Dude got to pay out though. It's crazy. That's what makes Hollywood so, so crazy, bro. Uh, May 11, 2007, in a complaint to the police, Combs making the band co-star um, alleges that he threatened her with a chair while new additions, Michael Bevins held her in place. Damn. That that is that's crazy. Combs attorney Baffin claims Gibson overreacted to it. The actress performed for the camera. Sources claim to the New York Daily News that he yelled for the cameras to be turned off. This is just another example of a false accusation by someone trying to make or take advantage of Sean's success and celebrity status. Um, it doesn't say that that one was paid out. So maybe, you know, maybe. 
you know, maybe, you know, maybe, <laughs> you know, why didn't they pay that one out? They paid out the one in, in L.A. when he spit on a dude, but they didn't pay this one out. Why? So maybe they could prove that maybe she wasn't quite telling the truth to some or, you know, something to do with the cameras. They turned the cameras off, but maybe they looked at the cameras or like whatever, a case where they were playing too much. Here's the thing. If you're out there and you're constantly facing these types of allegations, you know what I'm saying? Year after year after year. I mean, it's 2007, 2007, 2003, three allegations in 2007, one in 2006, one in 2005, one in 2004, one in 2003, one in 2001, 2099, right? You got two in 99, you got one in 98, one in 96, one in 93. Um, you got like three in 1990, between 1990 and 1991, you got like three. Like, bro, at some point, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, at some point, it's like, hey, some, man, you need to calm down, bro. His attorney doesn't care because his attorney's getting paid top dollar to, to fix all this stuff. The attorney becomes the fixer, right? He's just the fixer. You got to fix all this. You know, it's like, boy, who, who y'all playing? What, what, what are y'all doing? You got Michael Bevins is in, in, you know, involved in this. Like, what are you doing, man? Like from, you know, new edition and BBD. I, I, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense, but they didn't pay this woman out. You know, they didn't settle. So who knows? That's probably still in the court system. In 2010, in late November 2023, lawsuit Ventura claims all aspects, of, all aspects of her life were controlled by either Mr. Combs or his management companies. She claimed he paid for her apartment and all living expenses and that he had access to her medical records. For instance, okay, and we've heard about this before. When Ms. Ventura began experiencing memory loss, potentially due to um, excessive drug use and or head injuries, caused by Mr. Combs beatings as described below her MRI results were provided directly to, to Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs also repeatedly arranged for his staff to drive Ms. Ventura to certain doctor's appointments. In this way, Mr. Combs exerted own ownership over Ms. Ventura. And he's man, this is, this is bad. This is bad. Eventually she was able to break free, obviously, but this is bad. Like this, you want to talk about control? That's like a whole new level. So that was, that was 2010, and nothing happened until 2012, right? In the November of 2023 lawsuit, Ventura alleges that Combs said he was going to blow up her car, well, blow up the car of rapper Kid Cudi, whom Ventura was dating at the time, and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when this happened. Um, around that time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. Kid Cudi, in a statement to the New York Times, collaborated the account. So we've heard about this too, you know, with the whole thing with Cassie. So 2012, they're like, yeah, man, Puffy blew up old boy's car. <laughs> Cause I was, she's saying I'm dating him, I'm messing around with him. So Puffy blew the car up. That's crazy. And Kid Cudi was like, yeah, he did it. That's crazy. That's, you know, that should be, again, that should be criminal. Where the police at? That should be a real case. Right? So October 21st, 2013, uh, Combs launches his cable news network, Revolt TV. The network later expand, expanded into radio, digital, and film space. So again, he's doing all this crazy stuff, but he's still making moves, making more money on his way to becoming a billionaire. I'm sure by, by this point, 2013, he was already a billionaire. He's got Revolt, he's got Ciroc, you know what I mean? He's, he's got Bad Boy Records, he's, you know, he's got his clothing line, he's doing all his other stuff. You know what I mean? And, and he announces, you know, he's got a tequila now, right? So this is, this is 2014, he announces a tequila on top of the vodka. He's killing the game. 2015, he celebrates his 20th anniversary of Bad Boy Records with a box set and a tour featuring the label's legacy signees. So like he's still doing bad boys, doing all that. Got revolt. Those those bringing in the bread. You know what I mean? So then you get September 2018. After multiple attempts to sever ties with Combs, Victoria says she met with him to have dinner and believed it was a talk of concluding her bad boy contract and have a discussion about concluding their relationship for good. But after the dinner. Ventura alleged he forced herself onto her. Um, 
No, he forced herself into her apartment and forcibly raped her. Right? Why didn't she go to the police? I wonder why she didn't go to the police. But again, that would be hard. You got a lawyer, you know, she goes to the police and says, uh, you know, I didn't get consent, but then you got a lawyer on the other side is going to be saying, no, they were in a relationship. She was just mad. They were always being intimate, blah, blah, blah. I could see that being a problem. So it's kind of hard to say, yeah, he did this to me. And we got the, we got the physical evidence to show it. But at the same time, they're going to say, well, weren't you in a relationship with this guy? And this is something that you all did all the time. You know, Miss Ventura, aren't you just upset because of blah, blah, blah. Damn, that's terrible, man. That is terrible. And then this is from her 2023 suit. Soon thereafter, Miss Ventura took steps to completely separate herself from her longtime abuser, including, including by leaving the home that he paid for and returning the car he purchased for her. So finally, she was like, I had enough. She was out of there. I got, I'm gone. She finally broke ties. Damn. That's just the stuff that she went through. So 2022, June 26th. Combs received the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 2022 BET Awards and performed the melee of his hits with special guest stars during the awards ceremony, right? So that was June. And then October 2022, Forbes report that Combs is certified billionaire thanks to his deals uh, with the Alcohol Revolt TV and his music ventures, right? So he didn't become a, a billionaire until October of 2022. So he was doing all that stuff. He was setting it up, setting the stage, getting the money. He finally got there, certified billionaire. 2022. So 2022 and 2023. Damn. This is a lot going on, y'all. <laughs> like this, this timeline is crazy, bro. When you just sit there and read it. Um, in the February 2024 lawsuit, producer Rodney Little Rod Jones, a former producer of Combs, who worked with him on his latest release, the Love album, um, Off the Grind, alleged that the music mogul roped him repeatedly and during the making of the album. Combs forced Jones to solicit sex workers and take illegal drugs and more. So it was like, he was like, like Puffy was groping me all the time while I'm trying to work on music. And then he forced me to smash sex workers and do drugs and maybe film it. So sounds like another freak off, but with a guy. Little Rod, boy, that's crazy. And it says the suit names another, it names others close to Combs, including Combs' sons, Justin Dior, Combs, and high-ranking members of Motown Records and Universal Music Group as co-defendants. So, damn. So, dude's a producer in the studio with Puffy, and he's saying that Puffy kept touching him, kept groping him. And then he forced him to be with sex workers, to smash sex workers and take drugs, illegal drugs he didn't want to take. Man, that's a tough one right there. Like, bro, just leave, just leave, right? That's the thing, like, you just leave. If that's the case, man, once you do all this, I'm getting up and leaving. But the guy's name is Little Rod. Maybe he's a small man and maybe he didn't think he could fight his way out the situation or whatever. This is that whole Hollywood stuff, man. This is the Hollywood stuff, bro. Like, they're, they don't want to tell the powerful people no, because they want the money. They want to be able to continue to work and thrive and do what they love to do. So they allow these things to happen. Man, I can't let a, I can't let a grown man touch me like that, bro. We're going to have to fight. We're going to have to fight, man. Like, for real, you got to know the reputation of the dude going in. This is 2023, 2022, 2023. You already know who you're dealing with. You done made albums with this guy. You, you, done, you done heard the stories. You done have people come tell you. Yet you still in there. You in there by yourself. You know what I mean? You ain't going to have somebody in there with you. Right? Get somebody from the hood to come in there. I ain't trying to make dude, you know what I mean, sound a certain way. But I'm just like, come on, bro. That was man to man. Like, Cassie's a woman, bro. She's a cute, petite woman. I get it. She don't have the strength or whatever. Maybe she didn't want to bring weapons in or whatever. Like, you know, maybe she was in love with him. There's a whole bunch of other things going on, but you a dude, bro. Like, get up and walk out the room. You know what I mean? Unless they got you handcuffed or something like that, man, get up and walk out the room. Wait for your moment. You know what I'm saying? You grab anything, man. You grab this. Grab this. 
Do what you got to do. <laughs> Get up out that room. That's crazy, man. I'm sorry. As a man, nah, bro. This this right here, if this was me, if I was Lil Rod, this wouldn't be in here. Puffy wouldn't want it. It would have went down different. It would have been a different story. It would have been different. Like, what? Nah, it's just, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, we ain't doing that, bro. Nah, we ain't doing that. I'm uh uh. -uh. I have my people in the room too. We just whatever. We could just rumble, bro. We ain't doing that. And I'm still getting paid. You paying me, homie, for the time that I spent in here. You know, or it's like it's gonna get loud. Like, bro, I know where you stay at. And you saying your son in here? Nah, man. Nah, nah, nah. So September 15th, 2023, Combs received the key to the city from the New York Mayor Eric Adams. But Eric Adams re <laughs> regrets that. You know what I mean? Dude's having enough trouble, man, to have to deal with this as well. Right? Because we're all the way up to last year, right? So November 16th of last year, Ventura accused Diddy of several uh, sexual misconduct. Correction. Diddy of years. So uh, Ventura accused Diddy of years of sexual misconduct, harassment, sex trafficking, and rape. Ventura's allegations lasted for the entirety of their working and professional relationship. Right, Ventura files the civil suit in New York Superior Court under the state's Adult Survivors Act. That's the thing I was talking about earlier. This statute, the Adult Survivors Act, gave a window for people to, to make claims to stuff that happened way back in the day. Um, it kind of waived the, the statute of limitations on a lot of these crimes. Um, a New York law permit, uh, preventing, permitting victims of sexual abuse a one-year window to file civil action, civil action, not legal or criminal, civil um regardless of the statute of limitations of the crimes themselves so tiffany red a songwriter and one of cassie's collaborators later um publicly collaborates her claims so it's the survivors act that brought all this forward because it allowed a one-year window for people to file these cases in regardless of regardless of the statute of limitations on some of these crimes but it's civil, it's not criminal. So, and this is the big story to hit, have people like, yo, what's going on? So Combs, via his attorney, Benjamin Bradford, Brathman, told the New York Times, Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subject to Ms. Ventura's persistent demands of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. So she was looking for $30 million. I wonder how much she got. Despite withdrawing her initial threat, Ms. Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, um, aiming to tarnish Mr. Cohn's reputation and seeking a payday. One day after the public filing of her suit, Ventura and Cohn settled outside of court for an undisclosed amount. So here it is. The attorney said all that stuff and a day later they paid her. She was looking for 30 million. You think she got paid more or less? I'm pretty sure she got paid more than that 30. Right? She probably got 50 million. And there were people lining up, collaborating these stories, talking about the freak offs and getting real, you know, real detailed on what was going on and the guys involved, the male sex workers involved, they were coming forward. Man, it was crazy. In a statement, Ventura says, I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. While Combs stated, statement read, I wish Cassie and her family all the best love. And that's when Sean Combs was calling himself Brother Love, I think. So November 23 of 2023, one day before the window for filing suits under the Adult Survivor Act is set to close, two separate lawsuits alleging misconduct in the early 1990s are filed against Combs in New York Superior Court. And um, one by Joy Dickerson and the other by an unnamed plaintiff. Damn, that was the end of last year. November 28th of 2023, Combs temporarily steps down as chairman of Revolt TV amid the lawsuit, so he loses his spot at Revolt. Um, December 6th of last year, the unnamed fourth person comes forward accusing Combs and others of, of, a, of a, you know, of a gang rape in, in 2003. 
right? Same day after only speaking through his attorney uh, up until this point, Combs denies the accusations via his Instagram account, writing enough is enough. December 10th, in response to the accusations, 18 brand uh, severed ties with Combs, black owned e-commerce venture, uh, Empower Global. So he's starting to lose big money now. People are jumping ship. By the end of the, by the end of uh, 2023, see December 11th of last year, a public petition started by feminist and survivor advocacy group uh, Ultraviolet um, circulates, calling the Recording Academy to rescind Combs 2024 Grammy nominations for progressive R&B album amid the sexual abuse allegations. So now the people are coming after him big time. You know, um, the Recording Academy releases a statement in response to Diddy's 2024 Grammy nomination and the allegations. We are taking this matter very seriously and we are in the process of, of evaluating it with the time and care it deserves. So now, you know, Puffy's in the process of being canceled. Right. By 2023, end of 2023, he's in the process of being canceled. In response to the accusations, um, Streaming network Hulu scraps a reality show project featuring Combs that was previously in development and centered around a mogul and his family. So, again, he lost this. Probably got to keep the money, though. But Hulu dropped a project January of this year. A, re a representative of Combs tells the Hollywood Reporter the mogul won't be in attendance at the Grammys. He is subsequently absent from ceremony and all public events leading up to the awards. Right? Yeah. He, yeah, you gotta you gotta disappear. He probably went down to Miami. Right? So so then he loses he loses the deal with the alcohol brands. That's December, a correction of January 16th of this year. You know, Puffy lost the deal with the marketing of products and officially in their working relationship. So he's I wonder if he's even a billionaire anymore. Right. And then uh, February 26th, the fifth assault lawsuit is filed against Combs uh, by Rodney Little Rod Jones. Combs lawyer denies the allegations, claiming we have overwhelming, indisputable proof that the claims are complete lies. So Little Rod is still trying to get his. Then March 25th of this year, uh, Sean Combs' home in Los Angeles and Miami were raided by the feds. Bro. Bro. That's a crazy timeline going all the way back to 1990. Going all the way back, all the way back to 1990. Now, even if only a few of those things that he's accused of is true, man, he did a lot. It's it's the the gun cases and all that. That's true. Like he, he you know, got the, the stuff knocked down, you know, like, bro, that stuff is true. Then he, like the other stuff, the little Rod stuff, the Cassie stuff, you know what I mean? The holding the girl down and the, the running a train on a, on a girl in the studio. None of that stuff had criminal implications. And it leads to this, like, all right, the feds done hit his house. Why? There's a lot of rumors out there, speculation that this has something to do with human trafficking. You know, um, Academics was talking about this. Uh, Myron Gaines from Fresh and Fit was on DJ Academic Stream talking about it. Myron was with HSI. He was one of those investigators. <clears throat> if Myron was still in the feds, he would probably be on this case. So in, in, uh, I, in fact, I think this rumor has it. I haven't confirmed this yet, but Myron might even know the lead investigator on this particular case. Um, someone was telling me that they work together. So Sean Combs got a problem, bro. All this looks bad. So, you know, and Whatever the feds have going on, it's criminal. It's criminal. It's, it's not the civil stuff that we were just looking at. And you're not going to be able to just pay somebody out. Like this, the, the feds are coming with a solid case with all sorts of evidence, man. You got you got HSI, man. You got home like Homeland. That's Homeland Security. You got the FBI. You got DEA. You got all these agencies who are working together because this is what they do. They don't care who you are. They just... You, you the bad guy, they're gonna work the case. They're getting their evidence, they're doing their thing, and when they're ready, they come, they come see you. They hit your house to get some more evidence, and pretty soon they're gonna they're gonna be sitting down talking to Sean Combs. And we talking to Sean Combs, man. So whew, that was a lot. 
That was a lot, man. Um, so y'all know I love Breaking Points. Breaking Points is one of my favorite shows. They talked about Sean Combs yesterday and this, this stuff that's going on with the feds. Let's have a listen. Major news yesterday, federal authorities raiding the homes of Sean P. P. Diddy Combs. Let's go and put some of this up there on the screen. A video of Los Angeles uh, where you have Homeland Security investigators dragging individuals outside of a home that was law, law that was linked to Mr. Sean Combs. You can see that there are investigators that are on site. They appear to be both executing a search warrant and uh, searching all throughout the house for evidence for what appears to be tied to a sexual misconduct investigation, even possibly involving minors. The most noteworthy part of this, Crystal, is that they were simultaneous raids both on homes in Los Angeles and in Florida, in Miami. There was video that appeared to show federal investigators and authorities on some of his personal assets like boats and others. There's also been a video. Yeah, I see that video right there. That's Star Island in Miami. Um, you need a boat to get there. You need a ferry to get there or boat or something. So you see that, you know, the feds were accessing their nautical equipment and getting their teams in there via these boats to get to his house. Crazy that has now surfaced of showing Mr. Combs at the Miami airport, just like kind of pacing aimlessly. He has not yet been arrested by federal authorities and they haven't really issued any details such and so forth. But a lot of this just comes on the heels of what have been stunning allegations against Mr. Combs. Let's go and put this up there on the screen from the Los Angeles Times. They do a decent job here of writing up some of the recent shakeups that have happened. Quote, four separate plaintiffs have now filed civil lawsuits against Combs in the last month, accusing him of rape, sex trafficking a minor, assault, and a litany of other alleged abuses, imperiling his empire and sending shockwaves through the music industry. These include his former girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, known as Cassie, accusing him of rape and forcing her to have sex with male prostitutes in front of him, along with repeated physical assault. Mr. Combs actually settled that suit. You have another woman who is accusing Combs in a suit of drugging and raping her in 1991, recording the attack and then distributing that footage without her consent. A third woman filed a third suit in which she claimed that Combs and Guy singer Aaron Hall sexually assaulted her. And the most recent suit says that Combs and former bad boy label president Harv Pierre gang raped and sex trafficked a 17 year old girl. Pierre said in a statement, the allegations were disgusting, false, and a desperate attempt for financial gain. To be clear, Combs has denied all of this, but you know, anytime that the feds are raiding two of your houses in connection with an investigation like this, it's clearly that there is something serious going on. So the you see what I mean? Like about all of the accusations, man, it just sounds real bad. Like, in, you know, the feds don't move on hearsay. They don't move on rumor or speculation. They move on evidence. They move on testimony. So, you know, and you're not going to get a federal prosecutor to take a case that they can't win. So, you know, you're looking at something like this, man. Like, Sean Combs got some real issues. Some real, real issues, man. <sighs> the very latest that we know on the uh, raids of both the Miami and the California homes, a Homeland Security investigation spokesperson said it was executed with investigation. Law enforcement sources uh, told ABC News that the search warrant was being executed in L.A. Combs's sons were detained outside the home as is customary in such circumstances and then released without charges. Um, we have an official statement. They say earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSA, HSI, LA, HSI, Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available. And law enforcement sources also said to the to ABC News, the searches are being carried out as part of a federal investigation led by the Southern District of New York into alleged human trafficking. No criminal charges, though, have been filed in the investigation. So that's the most of what we know about what's going on here. But, you know, this all uh, started with uh with diddy there had been rumors about him on different like hip-hop podcasts and whatever but this mm -hmm. all really went mainstream when uh cassie 
filed her suit against him, alleging years of psychological, physical, and sexual abuse. Just to give you some of her allegations, um, she accused him of rape and for forcing her to have sex with male prostitutes in front of him, along with repeated physical assaults. She claimed that in 2012, Combs told her that he was going to blow up the car of rap artist Kid Cudi, suspecting that Cassie and Cudi were dating. The suit alleges that around that time, Kid Cudi's car did in fact explode in the driveway, and Cudi told the New York Times, quote, this is all true. In 2015, uh, this is a, a different, there were a variety of allegations against him uh, alleging physical assaults too throughout his career. I was actually, as I went through the, the timeline, I was sort of shocked. I didn't realize the number of actual physical assault yes. allegations against him. Cassie also alleged years of physical, psychological, and emotional abuse. She claims Combs forced her to purchase and take illegal drugs like cocaine, ketamine, and ecstasy, that he filmed her as he forced her to participate in sex with male sex workers in multiple cities for his own voyeuristic pleasure and a practice he called freak-offs, and that he beat her on many occasions in retaliation for talking to other men, often with witnesses present. Some of the gruesome details of what Cassie alleged included that she was suffering severe memory loss, potentially from these routine alleged beatings from Diddy, and that he was so controlling that even when she sought medical help for that memory loss, again, potentially resulting from these beatings, he got the x-rays, he controlled the medical records. That was the level of total control he had over her, according to Cassie. Immediately. Man, that's insane. And that's obviously she got that directly from NPR. We just looked at that. This doesn't look good for, for Sean Combs at all, bro. And this is something like, you know, you think you don't reach billionaire status. You know, you think you're untouchable. You think you do what you want to do. And all this stuff surfaces. All of it comes shooting up to the top. Bro, it, it man, it, do, it just doesn't help. You know what I mean? With that character component, it just doesn't help. Even though all that other stuff wasn't criminal, it's civil. There's been payouts. You know, it's a history of you paying people out. Um, I mean, God forbid if Shine gets on it, like, yeah, man, I, I took that case for Puffy. You know what I mean? Again, it doesn't shine. He, he got kicked out of the country. I don't care. But he got paid. So he'll probably, you know, he G with it. He probably going to keep his mouth shut. Who knows what Jennifer Lopez might say? You know, um, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's just a good chance that Fez don't went out there and talked to her. Even though she's like, I haven't been a part of that world in so long, in many decades, like I know, but we're building this case. The feds go all the way back and they're always thorough, always thorough. And it's there's nothing you can do to stop them. And, you know, you look at this and you look at how they come, they're going to come after Puff. They're going to come after Sean Combs, right? A billionaire. Same thing's going on with Trump. The only thing, the only difference is Trump is running for office. If he can become president of the United States, he can make a lot of his own problems go away. Right. At, certainly at the federal level and then at the state level, they can't. What are you going to do? Go into the White House and, and drag the president into your state jail. So. That's that's the thing. But I would I would say that Trump and Puff are like the same type mentalities, like, oh, I can't be touched until they realize they can. And you got people around you like, nah, bro, this is for real. They coming to see you. Like You got a problem. It's crazy. Immediately after the charges come out, they settle. Um, and this was in the context we were talking before mm -hmm. of that New York survivors law. Yes. Um, this is the law that was put through that gave basically a temporary window for any sort of sexual assault claim where the statute of limitations had ex it allowed people to bring those claims in the context of a civil suit. So that was the context for actually a number of these claims against Diddy. And um, as I said before, there are a range of allegations against him. And as you mentioned, Sagar, the most recent one having to do with allegations of sex trafficking a right. minor. So we can all guess that this investigation likely has to do with some of the allegations against him. And just to reiterate, he denies right. all of this and says that none of it happened. He denies everything. Yeah. I mean, like We'll take it for what it's worth. I think the timeline, though, is pretty damning. And we can put that on the screen, please, from NPR. I encourage people to go through and read this. Look, I don't wasn't all that familiar, I guess, with uh, all of this details here about Mr. Combs. But when we're going back, you know, he started his music industry career here in 1990. 
And according to this 2023 suit, he actually, in 1990 to 1991, then allegedly began to sexually assault this victim and a friend after a music industry event where he, quote, beat her several days later whenever he was confronted. Again, in 1991, immediately after beginning this, according to that lawsuit, allegedly drugs, sexual assault, videotapes 19-year-old after going on a date with him. Then you continue down the line. 1996, Combs is found guilty of criminal mischief for threatening a photographer from the New York Post with a gun. Then you see in 1999, he is arrested, charged with two felonies, second degree assault, criminal mischief in the beating of a record executive and two bodyguards who beat them with their fists, a telephone, a champagne bottle. Uh, he publicly apologized. He asked for the charges to be dismissed. He reportedly then paid the individual some $500,000 and assault charges were dropped. It's like we continue. Now you see that, bro. Like, I'm sorry, your honor. I didn't mean, you know, for us to beat him like that. My bad. And pays the dude off and the, and the charges go away, man. It's crazy, man. I mean, the fact that he got away with all that, I would have been just happy to get away with that. Like, oh, I got away with that? Let me chill out, bro. Let me chill out. Jay-Z had an incident where a guy was pirating some of his music and Jay-Z saw the dude allegedly at a party in New York at a club or whatever. And as the story goes, Jay-Z got a knife and shank, dude. That's how the story goes. I don't know how true that is. There was, you know, there was a case behind it or whatever. And then that was it. I never heard Jay-Z getting involved in nothing gangster ever after that. I, it never, it's like he kept, he kept his head right or he dealt with it a different way, right? Because Jay really did come from the streets. You got someone like Sean Combs who was around people who were in the streets, but Sean went on that like, you know, Puffy went out there like that. Puffy went out there moving weight or nothing like that to my knowledge, right? But here he is doing all this gangster stuff and getting away with it. He ain't getting away with nothing right now. I tell you what, brother Dino, he's like, yeah, I saw that, bro. It's also been reported that the feds arrested his drug mule uh, with the drugs. I, I know that there was articles out there about a drug mule. Um, I didn't read the article. I didn't know that they caught the dude with drugs. But even if you find somebody who's got a bunch of, you know, illegal drugs on them, and then that person says, yeah, you know, Dino Dinosaur gave him to me. You know what I mean? D.L. Sang gave him to me. You got to prove it. You got to prove it. And the only way you can prove it is if you give the drug mule the dope. So, and then you can track that, you know, you can track the money came from Sean Combs to the drug mule. They bought yo dope and then he brought it back. And then they all got caught with it. The feds in this country, they move a certain way and that's how they get you. And the, the money involved is traceable and the, the dope is traceable and all that. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the drug mule thing, but, you know, we can look into it. You down this road, Crystal, and every five years or so, we see uh, a pop up of a gun charge, a violence charge, an allegation. But it does seem to be that everything began a real crescendo with his cementing of social status through his all white party in the Hamptons, through uh, networking and using his power, his influence, his money to surround himself with some of these sycophants and to allegedly, you know, conduct have some of the horrible conduct that is detailed here. You really just read like a timeline of somebody going completely out of control. Well, like, and he became, the years. I mean, this is an iconic figure. Yeah. Right. In his, in his own right, in right. terms of being an artist, he became not only like a hip hop mogul, but also this sort of cultural mogul with, you know, clothing line and all, you know, a alcohol line and all right. sorts of other business deals. So he was, is larger than life. And, um, you know, that's part of what can allow this sort of culture to persist because people feel that their whole career, their you know entire paycheck, their entire life is dependent on staying quiet, on going along to get get along, and not unearthing these you know longtime allegations against him. And so you know, Cassie is really the one who, through that New York Survivors Law, she really broke the seal on again. There were a lot of rumors, and there were certain things, as you mentioned, that were in the public record yeah, in terms exactly. of charges and things that he was found guilty of. But she really opened the door for these other, um, you know, allegations to be launched. And uh, it does make me think, you know, I was, I was a little unsure about the New York survivors mm -hmm. law. But um, in this context, like it, it does make me feel like this, this made a lot of sense and did provide a window for uh, justice for a lot of people who, you know, back 20, 30 years ago, 
you probably felt like, especially when you're going up against a powerful person, you have no chance. Like there's absolutely no chance that you can bring these allegations and be met with anything other than having your entire life completely destroyed and no one taking you seriously. And so. I mean, I guess there's some validity to that. I mean, how do you guys feel about that? Like, do you, is, do you believe that there are people out there who are in a situation where they just can't do anything? And if so, how do you handle that? I, um, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just a violent dude. I know how I would handle it. You know, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I got something for you. That's what my, that was my pop's favorite phrase. I got something for you. I dropped the link in case anybody wants to come up. I'm, I'm curious to know what y'all think on this. You know, it, that little rod thing, like you a man, bro. I'm sorry, man. I guess I'm wrong for saying that, but you got, you got to be a dude, bro. You got to stand up, man. Like you, you a dude. What are you doing? You a man. Don't you, you got to sit back and, 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 and take care of business, bro. You a man. Uh, I, I can see, I'll give you, you know, like with Cassie, maybe she doesn't have any support. Maybe she did. Like she was in love with dude or whatever. Um, you know, I, I, okay. I'll give Cassie that. Like she ain't, maybe she ain't built like that, but whew, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Like you, as, as a dude, you got to do something. And even Cassie, she didn't have family. She, nobody she can go talk to and say, Hey, I got a problem with this dude. Um, I need y'all to handle this for me or something. Like, I don't know. Maybe she didn't. Providing this window where people could once again come forward. First of all, you know, the times have changed somewhat, but also it, Diddy is also not quite the towering figure that he once mm -hmm. was. Still incredibly wealthy, incredibly powerful, all of those sorts of things, but maybe not quite at the pinnacle that he used to be. And so that provides the, the opening for these incredibly serious charges to be made against him. So, you know, that's what we know at this point. We'll see where the investigation leads. I welcome the investigation. I think it's good. I think there's a lot of famous people who've been hanging out with him. I mean, it's according to some of the allegations out there. I mean, it was like a Singer Epstein type situation. They've got Prince Harry now who's been named in a lawsuit. You got a lot of celebrities, you got politicians and others. I mean, social he was a major and towering figure of New York and in Hamptons, L.A. society, Miami, you know, hanging out with all of these people. And I mean, this type of behavior does not happen in a vacuum. And in fact, uh, these pe type of people who exhibit this type of behavior often enjoy and get off in flaunting it in other people's face. So it's mm -hmm. like, well, how That's many true. people out there really knew about what was going mm -hmm. on? In almost every single instance, you know, it was part of the power that you could get away with stuff like this. So yeah. Continue to track that. Between yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Brother Pitney, you're right, man. He's like, regarding Little Rod, some men, especially artists, are willing to sacrifice anything and everything for their dream, including their own dignity. Sad, but true. That's a fact, bro. And and people prey on that in Hollywood, especially. I've seen that in Hollywood. That's what they do. They dangle your dream in front of you, and most people, they're going to reach for it. And when you reach for it, they got you. You know what I mean? What Dave Chappelle say, got you, bitch. That's what they're doing. They will do that. So you hear about the casting couch and you hear about the Harvey Weinstein's of the world where he was saying, making these deals with these women, which he held up his end of the bargain. But there are also guys out there, men, powerful producers who are men going after men who are chasing the dream, actors and whatnot, writers, directors. And there's stories out there, bro. Like there's people tell you like, yeah, this producer want me to come to his house in the hills. I show up, it's the middle of the day and the dude's walking around with just a robe on, with the robe open. Talking about, come on in. It's like, nah, bro, you know what time it is. So, and if you beat the dude up, you ain't never getting another job in Hollywood. If you just walk away, then all right, cool. But if you go in there, like it is what it is, man. Um, you know, sad, but true, bro. And and one last thing before we wrap this up, I was just, you know, just kind of looking at it. Uh, Brother Dino, the New York Post is reporting that Brandon Paul, that's the name of the, allegedly, that's the name of the alleged drug mule. Uh, who played college basketball for Syracuse. Uh, I guess he was a walk-on guard from 2018 to 2020. Uh, I see the 25-year-old was booked for cocaine and controlled substance possession and released Tuesday after posting a $2,500 bail per Miami-Dade County court records um, accessed by Yahoo Sports. So the drug mule was indeed caught with controlled substances on him. Uh, including cocaine and other controlled substances in Miami-Dade. Um, and he posted $2,500 bail, which is normally at 10%. So he just had to pay $250 and got out. 
Um, you know, because Miami, like whatever he had on, he must have been a real, real small amount. Because I mean, it's Miami at the bottom, man. That's that's it's a lot of it's a lot of dope down there. Um, but it says here in the article that he was arrested on two felony charges at Miami Airport on Monday, um, and he's accused of being Diddy's uh, alleged drug mule. That's according to Yahoo Sports, and also the New York Post is also reporting this. Um, so yeah, dude got arrested at the airport. He had controlled substances on him and, um, you know, they booked him and he posted $2,500 bail. So it is what it is. It is what it is, bro. And have you watched quiet on set yet? I haven't haven't watched it yet. It's four parts, which I did not realize. I thought it was a single one. They're Uh, each, you know, like. 50 minutes or something okay you can get through it quickly on double speed but um you know it's just made me really reflect on it seems like in literally every corner of the entertainment industry you have some sort of like harvey weinstein especially in the 90s especially in the 90s when everything was so centrally powerful absolutely that's true yeah that's probably uh that's probably very true but because you have this dynamic of you know you have so many people who are desperate for these slots Mm -hmm. You have these massive power imbalances. You have a lot of people who are very vulnerable, who may not have a lot of money, who are just, you know, depending on you, desperately hoping for their chance. They think this is their one opportunity. It leads to them, you know, let me stay quiet. Let me put up with these things that I think are unacceptable because I have to, because, you know, I'm dependent on this and other people are dependent on me, et cetera. And it does create a climate that is very rife for abuse. You see it also with the um, R. Kelly. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, similar similar type of allegations, you know, here of that level of control of um, control of partners, control of women, psychological abuse, physical abuse, sex, sexual abuse, mental abuse, et cetera. Very similar type dynamics between these, um, these cases as well. So um, anyway, we'll watch and see what unfolds. But if any fraction of the allegations against him are true, I hope that his ass pays for it. Well, especially if- <laughs> she's some shout out to Crystal. She sums it up right there. I hope his ass pays for it. And when you got the feds on you, bro, it's it's gonna be real. It's it's real. It's real. They're not they're not playing. Um, yeah, he's gonna pay for this. This is no other way to put it. He's gonna pay for this. I mean, here's the thing: having the money that he has, he can hire the perfect legal team. But there's only so much they can do. There's, there's only so much they can do. Right? Like, you're looking at the cases. Like, you look at, you know, you look at the evidence they have, you know, bro. And if it's a matter of you had this minor with you in your custody and you cross state lines, you know, now you got a problem. Now you got a problem. You know, and there's a lot of articles out there about Sean Combs and Justin Bieber, and they're looking at, a uh, video from back then it, it it hasn't aged well at all so you got you got that going on yeah man Sean Combs got a problem it's got a real problem and like Crystal was saying and brother Pitney was saying there's people out there chasing dreams and they're willing to sacrifice whatever that they just they don't care they're willing to sacrifice whatever for that dream that's that's been going on forever um i i really believe that this is the me too movement finally hitting the music business. And like I said, Sean Combs, you know, Diddy might be the first one, but he ain't going to be the last one. They they coming. They coming. So dudes are going to have to, you know, really tighten it up. And that business is crazy. That business is crazy. I've been around those folks, man. You got actors out there who, you know, they got these crazy writers and they want stuff like, I only want yellow M&Ms and I want my room to be purple and I want this and that, whatever. They put it in the contract, whatever. The Hollywood, like the Hollywood types versus the music people, the music people tend to be more violent because maybe they came from the streets or whatever. So they come into the room and just act as I've been around it. I've been on video shoots. You know what I mean? I was on a video shoot with this R&B guy and like dude was from Philly and his family. Like I'm there with, you know, with my people and, I'm sitting around, you know, people were just talking, like talking to the dude's wife or girlfriend, baby mama, whoever it was, and the kids was there. And our kids, were, I mean, everybody was chilling by our kids. I mean, the people I was with, children, I didn't have any kids at the time. And the guy come walking up like who, like talking big, right? I'm just looking at him. I'm just looking at him like, bro, do whatever, homie. 
Like, it's just the way dude was acting. Way over the top. And it's, it's not like the guy was a major star. If I said his name, y'all probably wouldn't even know what I'm talking about. But at the time, he was, you know, he was popping. And he had one of the young people in our camp was in the video. She was the primary of the, 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 the primary uh, actress in the video. So we there for her. So, you know, we just trying to be nice and dude was acting the way he was acting. Like, for real, step up. And the guy never came over like, oh, my bad, man, this and that. Never. So I'm like, all right, I see you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where is dude now? Probably back on the block. Talking about when he used to be this and that. But those type people, man, they got these attitudes. And if they get some money, they get some success, they get some clout, they continue to grow like Sean, then guess what? Now there's, there's unrestricted, they're unrestricted. They could do what they want. They believe they can get away with it. Why? Because they keep working the system until finally they hit a brick wall. That might be the situation here with Sean Combs. Like he just hit a brick wall. And the guy... Is a self-made man. He is from the street, so he do understand something. His homeboys are telling him, like, the real dudes are telling him, like, you got a problem, cuz. <laughs> like, you got a problem. Find out what the feds have, find out what they're offering, and take it. You're going to have to sit down, bro. Negotiate you one of those Bernie Mac facilities. You know, when you go do your time, you want to do your time in the camp. You ain't trying to go into the penitentiary. That might be the best thing for him to do. Like, I'm just going to negotiate this down. I'm going to go out here to, to the camp and do my time with the white-collar criminals. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go out here with the, the embezzlers and stuff like that, the Ponzi scheme dudes. Let me go over here to this camp. I could probably still make music or whatever, make calls and, you know, pay some restitution. That might be the only thing he can do. But otherwise, you try to fight this thing and lose, now you're doing your time in Marion somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You're going to, like, real jails. You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I mean? Like, what, what, what the? You finna go to prison prison. Then what? You ready for that? You know what I mean? So, and especially like you look at the, the crimes or whatever, like, and the state don't want to deal with that, trying to keep him safe. Nah, bro. I think Sean Combs understands exactly what's going on. He understands what he's up against. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I bet you they're going to come to him with a deal. They don't want to drag this out. They don't want to use taxpayers' money to pay for, you know, to, to, to go toe to toe with Sean Combs and pay all his money in court fees and whatnot. Dude probably take a, he's probably going to take a deal. Like, man, all right, I'll do this time, whatever, do eight years or whatever, five years, something like that, and let me do my time in the camp and take that and then pay whatever. Y'all want me to pay what? 200, 300 million, 400 million? Fine, I'll pay that out. And then you just sit back and still be okay at the end of the day and then maybe finally learn his lesson. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Brother Dino is saying this, this drug mule, quote, unquote, is on borrowed time. Uh, the supplier of Diddy uh, want him rubbed out. Uh, man, I ain't going to lie to you, man. Probably not. Probably not. Like, if this dude, if it was like that, bro, especially over here, he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't bond out. He would go straight into witness protection. He would roll on him. I mean, honestly, man, ain't no lawyer to over here, man, especially the kind of people that's going to be around someone like, you know, Sean Combs, some dude who played basketball at a college. Nah, bro, he, he going to give it up. He going to give it up. The problem is he ain't got no proof. And they already got him. His name is out there, so they can't wire him up. You know what I mean? He's not cooperating already. So if you get a guy like that who's cooperating, cartel, whatever. It ain't like Sean. How much weight you think dude's buying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't, he ain't moving like that. He getting what he want. It might be, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, maybe a quarter. You know what I mean? Maybe the whole thing. He might get, he might get a, a bird. You know what I'm saying? He might get a brick. For his personal use and have dude just have it. So whenever he need it, go get another brick. That's nothing, bro. I mean, there's people out here that move, you know, 25, 50 bricks a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? They ain't messing up the, the drug world. Nah, bro, that's that's a trillion dollar industry. You know what I mean? What, what, what Combs is doing, what these Hollywood stars are doing, man. Nah, I, I, I know dudes that, that do a couple bricks on their own, bro. Just hanging out at the house. You know, so I, I, I just really have a hard time believing, believing that someone like Sean Combs is is doing that much blow, you know what I'm saying? But it is it is what it is, man. I don't think I don't think the drug mule got anything to worry about, other than you know Puffy's camp trying to put everything on him. Like, dude, they caught him with they caught him with a little bit of blow on some other security. You know what I mean? Maybe some Percocets or something like that. They caught him with whatever they caught him with. I mean, bro, what, he can just go do that time. Like, all right, guilty. 
first time offender, got a halfway decent attorney. He's going to he's going to go and get into a drug program, do some rehab. He out. You know what I'm saying? He'll be out in 60 months or less. <laughs> like, dude, that's nothing. He can really just keep his mouth shut. Get the lawyer in there. Lawyer up. Let the lawyer do his thing. Like, yeah, they caught me. I got that. You know what I mean? He's going to sit down and do his time. First time offender. Looking all good. Got his hair combed. Got a suit on. Mommy and daddy sitting there like, oh, yeah, we don't know where he lost his way. You know, we just need a little help. He's like, yeah, I got it. I'm an addict. Just needs some rehab. You know what I mean? Again, get a camp. <laughs> right? Wind up in some program. Get a little camp or whatever. And he his, his part is done. Anyway, if I was him, that's what I I do, man. I'm like, nope, that's mine. All that's mine. I got a problem. <laughs> that's it right there. I got a problem. And like I said, you're a white guy. For a white guy standing in front of a judge, hey, man, I got a problem. I got, you know what I mean, swept up and all this, man. It was Sean Combs, and I was just trying to, you know, I bought the stuff myself, and I was just trying to beat her in case they needed something. They didn't ask me to buy this. I did it on my own. Bye, bro. We're going to do your little time, man. Go ahead. He probably wouldn't even get 60 months, bro. He'd probably get 60 months suspended. Go put him in a little uh, rehab, do a little rehab, get through rehab, and he good. He, I'm, you know, he's a citizen now. <laughs> he come out of there like, all right, I'm good. Nah, I don't think dude got to worry about getting rubbed out. He ain't, uh, he ain't nowhere near big enough. Unless there's stuff out there I don't know about. Just based on what we just read here, what he had on him, man, it's nowhere near enough. They got, they just got into what controls. It was two counts. Let me see. It was uh, he was arrested on two felony charges at the Miami airport on Monday. Uh, he is accused of working for rapper Sean uh, Diddy Combs, and he's the alleged drug mule. Let's see what, it, but it don't say what he had on him. Um, but it says he's the 25 year old was booked for cocaine and controlled substances possession um, and released Tuesday after posting twenty five hundred dollars bail. I mean, I said, that even it's not like he had, like I said, it, it doesn't even sound like he had weight on him like that. You know what I'm saying? Like he, ain't, we have to wait and see what that happens, but it sounds like what he had could probably fit in a backpack or something like that, like a, like an attache case or something. He ain't really had nothing like that. He ain't got nothing to worry about, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, he good. So, um, you know, obviously we're going to be following this. This ain't the end. We're going to be following this, man. Yeah, it's pretty basic, bro. <laughs> like, pretty basic. I feel you on that, man. You know, Val Corp Photography, Thomas. Yeah, man, it's pretty basic, bro. Hey, it's just a... Yeah, yeah, that's... Of everybody that might be facing something, the dude the dude that had that little bit of work on him, pff, the white guy, he good, man. It's everybody else that's worried. You know, like... And, and Puffy really worried. Who else talking? You know, because you best believe everybody in the circle going to be like, yeah, he did that. Yep, I was listening to that. Matter of fact, I got I got a file right here. Let me see this video file. Let me show you. Let me show you something. Mr. Prosecutor, look at this file. All right, you see that right there? Yeah, I got some evidence. Y'all going to have to let me go. I need immunity. And y'all can have that. Y'all can have that picture. Y'all can have that video. You know what I mean? Brother Cody King in the building. What's good, Cody? I bet there's more to come. <laughs> Facts. There's <laughs> a lot more to come. Get your popcorn and stay. You know what I'm saying? Don't You don't want to miss a moment. Get your popcorn, bro. It's going to be a lot to come, but I'm, I'm telling you, I think this ends with, um, with, with Sean Combs taking the deal. He's going to plead out. They're going to give him a real, real lenient deal. You know what I'm saying? He's going to do some time probably in a camp. They're probably negotiating that right now. He's going to be in a camp somewhere. He's going to pay restitution. Right, he's gonna have to do community service when he get out. You know what I'm saying? I doubt if he. I mean, dude, he might only do like I said, max sixty months in a camp, max, max. I wouldn't be surprised, and that'll get suspended. Right, he's like get sentenced to sixty months. He might do eighteen to twenty five months, something like that, and then probation for the rest of it. Right, start liquidating some of his properties to pay off all that money. They, they probably gonna hit him with a couple hundred dollars in restitution, pay all that off or whatever. It ain't like he's they looking at him for like, you know, tax evasion or anything like that. You know what I mean? He ain't dealing with that kind of craziness. I think he's gonna take that deal, be a fool not to. I take that deal, come out, be religious, come out. I found God, start a church, really get paid. Be right back to being a billionaire. That's what I think is gonna happen. Brother Dino, little Rod Jones claimed he has seen the mule acquire and distribute uh distribute 
drugs to Diddy, including ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, mushrooms. Yeah, if he could prove it, great. That's good for little Rod. But again, the dude, the, the quote-unquote drug mule, the 25-year-old kid who was the point guard, you know what I mean, a walk-on point guard at Syracuse, man, he, man, come on, man. I'm telling you, bro. He gonna say, this is my stuff. This is me. I got this. I got this. This is me. I, I, this is all my dope. And he going, I got a problem. I need, I need rehab. And they gonna, they gonna work with him. They gonna work with him. He ain't got nothing to worry about. I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Puffy just gonna, like I said, take a case. You know what I mean? Cody's King is like too rich. He's gonna do house arrest. Nah, they gonna wanna make an example out of him, bro. He's gonna do a camp. He's gonna have to do a camp. He's gonna do a few months in the camp at least. And then the rest of the, you know, the rest of it suspended, put a, uh, you know, put a box on his ankle, put a little monster on him, and then turn him over to one of his mansions or whatever. Probably the one in Miami. That's where I would go if I was him, be in Miami. But, I mean, I think he's going to do some time, bro. I really do. You know, Val Corby, like, keyword is claim. Facts are much more difficult than claims. Yeah, man, facts are much different than claims. Facts. He can say what he want, man. The fact, the fact is, fact, they caught him with the dope. He got the two counts. He's out on bail. He's out. You know, they caught him on Monday. He's out Tuesday. Out on bond. His lawyer is going to tell him, like, yeah, man, just take that. That's your case, man. Take it. We're going to get you, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get you put in some minimum security. We're going to get you, you know, we're going to get you a, a reduced sentence. We're going to get you a rehab. That's it. Smack on the wrist. Don't do nothing else stupid. Tell him everything you know about Puffy. And as you're going to tell him, like, yeah, this is, you know, this is the drugs they like, blah, blah, blah. Everything y'all got, y'all know what time it is. Y'all read the article. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know what the freak offs are. He called me up when he wanted the freak off. I bring the dope. Right? He paid me, I leave. Who gave you the money? So-and-so gave me the money over there, the driver guy, one of the bodyguards. Or, like, Puffy gave it to me himself, whoever. He might, Puff might want to pay and give him an envelope. They paid me in cash. This is how much they paid me. This is where I put the money. That's all he got to do is tell him what they want to know. You know what I'm saying? He going to get he gonna get the best, the best treatment, the quote unquote drug mule. It ain't like, you know what I mean? Unless Sean Combs was running a, you know, a multi-million dollar <laughs> drug ring, which we know that ain't the case. Unless he was doing that, he ain't got nothing to worry about, bro. You know what I mean? He ain't got nothing to worry about, bro. That's that's what I would do. Cody was like, uh, is that who the rod is, Rod? Um it could be like Lil Rod is just Lil Rod was trying to get money because Cope, because uh Puffy allegedly groped him and you know made him have intercourse with uh or act you know interact with sex workers or whatever. And they didn't say they were male or female sex workers, so dude probably is you know Lil Rod probably is setting the stage. You know what I'm saying? He probably is setting the stage. You know what I mean, Val Corp is as long as Diddy wasn't involved in the Clintons, he will survive facts. If he was involved with the Clintons and going off to uh what's his name's island, you know what I mean? Yeah, he got a problem. Again, if they could prove that. Whatever the feds want from Sean Combs, Sean Combs is gonna have to give it to him. And like I say, just take take the deal. Take the deal. You know what I mean? Take the deal. Like, you know, like if my brother Cody's like, if he is involved with the Clintons, he will get off no troubles. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh nah, what's his uh what's the name of the dude that got the hung himself? That guy, the um they had all the little girls, it was flying them off to the island. So long as Sean Combs wasn't doing that, I forget the name of that dude. But so long as Sean Combs wasn't doing that, he'll be all right. You know what I mean? Um Weinstein, or no, I forget his name, but anyway, so long as he wasn't doing that, he's fine. He's fine. I think what he was doing is just he got his head too big, he's making grown ups do stuff, and it's you know, it is what it is. Yeah, what's the name of the guy that I'm talking about, y'all? What, what's what is his name? Epstein, there it is, right there. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> talking about Epstein. You know what I mean? So long as he wasn't doing no Epstein stuff, then, you know, Puffy is going to be all right. But if he was, and those people can give him um, give him proof or whatever, or collaborate what they already have, you've got to understand the feds already have what they want. They just need, they just want to collaborate and just make it, you know, airtight. So if they can collaborate what the feds already have, this ride dude or whoever, the mule or whoever else, and then, yeah, you know, Puffy ain't going to stand a chance. But I don't, I don't think it's that serious. But we're going to have to wait and see. We're going to wait and see. Yeah, there's a lot of film out there, too. That's another thing. Puff is like, you can't touch me. I'm going to film all this and cap it. Bro, 
it's in the <laughs> it's in the cloud somewhere, boy. They got all that information, man. And uh, brother Dino's like, well, the feds want his secretly filmed stuff from the house. I hope he didn't have it in the house. But wherever that stuff is, somebody got it. Someone's gonna bring it forward. The world is full of haters, and you know, there's a lot of people out there. They got obviously they got problems with Sean Combs, and they got their hands on the videos. Like either give me the money for the video, I'm gonna get a video up to the feds. So I think he'll be, I think he'll be whatever. Yeah, Dino's like Trump and Epstein. Yeah, they say Trump and Epstein was tight. Epstein was cool with a whole lot of people all over the world, world family members. You know what I mean? Powerful politicians in America, all over the world, man. That's why Epstein ain't here no more. <laughs> that's that's why dude was in, uh, you know what I mean? Protective custody in jail, and he gone. That's why he. He had too much on the powerful people. The one percent had to come get him. You know what I mean? Cody was like, "Yeah, Puffy's part of the Rainbow Clan. They can't, they can't charge him. Oh, they charging his ass. <laughs> they gonna charge his ass. You know what I mean? They gonna charge him for real, for real." He's like, "Ding, ding." So, but yeah, fellas, that's it. That's it. I mean, we're gonna definitely keep our eyes on this. This story is not going anywhere. And as details come forth, I'm really waiting for them to release the indictment. Uh, maybe the indictment sealed or something. I don't know. But when that indictment comes out, I'm definitely going to be watching um, Fair Reacts. When Myron breaks down that indictment, I'm going to be watching that show. <laughs> I, I promise you, I'm going to be watching that show. Um, and I'm pretty sure Myron's going to be talking about that if he hasn't already. Um, that's definitely got to be the, the next talking, the next show he does on Fair Reacts. It has to be. And I'm going to watch that. Yeah, bro, the Rainbow Clan, man, he, he getting he getting locked up. He getting, he gonna do some time. I I really think Puffy's gonna do some time. I think it's gonna be in a minimum security, like a camp. Um, I think he's gonna get hit with like like a like a sentence of like sixty months, but he's only gonna do a few months in the in the camp, and then the rest of it is gonna be, you know, what I mean, probation. It's gonna be suspended and all that pending his probation. He's gonna have to pay some money out, probably a lot of money. He's gonna have to do some um public service. And I think he's going to come out of the system. He's going to find Jesus or whatever. And then I think he's going to get into a religious game myself and start producing gospel albums and get right back to being a billionaire. And hopefully he'll learn from it. Hopefully he will learn from it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Nice listening to you. First time listener. Uh, I'll subscribe later, brother. We'll talk to you, man. Come back, bro. We're going to um, definitely holler at you, man. Thanks for coming through. I appreciate you. You know what I mean, brother Cody? Uh, appreciate you as well, man. And everybody who was checking us out, brother Dino, Always a pleasure talking to you, bro. Um, and we had Niners in here, brother Pitney. You know what I mean? We had Scam Likely, man. I appreciate all y'all, Jack Black. And I'm sure, of course, we had a lot of uh, ninja watchers out there. You know, like I said, man, we ain't trying to hate over here. We're just trying to find, piece together the truth. So that's how we do it. We'll read some articles, watch some videos, try to piece together the truth and see how it plays out, man. If you want that drama, there's plenty of people out there on YouTube that's getting into the rumors and speculations, and it's, it's, it's funny to watch. But we we know we try to stick to the facts over here. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, early tomorrow, man. My daughter has a, a big performance. She's, her school's been working on this band performance thing. So uh, I'm going to be doing early shows tomorrow because I don't know what time we're going to get back from the performance. And um, Friday, Jay Swans and I are going to be talking uh, about air traffic control. The government, the, the Federal Aviation Administration is looking for air traffic controllers. They're about to do another hire coming up here in April. So Jay Swans and I are going to do another video to show you how to apply and get through the paperwork and get yourself hired as an air traffic controller for the Federal Aviation Administration. You don't need any college experience. You don't need any experience in aviation. It's all self-contained. They do a bunch of tests. They provide all the training. The training is paid for. You don't have to spend a dime out of your own pocket. And if you make it through this, uh, the training course and you're successful, you'll be making six figures plus as an air traffic controller with some of the best benefits I've ever seen. I'm a retired air traffic controller. So is Jay Swans. This career is life changing. So Friday, we're going to be doing a live talking about how to apply, how to get your packet ready. For those who want to get a head start, just head over to usajobs.gov, <clears throat> type in air traffic controller. Um, Air traffic, air traffic control specialist and begin to uh, upload your resume and begin that process. Um, yeah, it, it, is, it, is what, it is what it is. So, um, and I can't remember, it's been so long now, it's been a few years, I can't even remember the series for air traffic control, 2182, I think it's 2182. So I think that's what it is, 2152, 2152. 
the series. Anyway, we'll tell you all that good stuff Friday. Jay Swans and I are going to knock that out. So um, appreciate y'all rocking out with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, push, yeah, push Sean Combs, man. We'll see what happens to him. Um, but I will be back tomorrow. I'll see y'all tomorrow, man. I hope all is well where you are. Thanks so much. I'm DL Saint. This is the I Really Want to Know podcast. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace. It's just a thing of beauty. Dawn, that's the end. The end.